June is Pride Month, so today we are celebrating with this fun floral rainbow watercolor. Love is love. And on this channel, I am very proud to stand with and to support the LGBTQ plus community. Of course, June is Pride Month, so we are celebrating with a beautiful floral rainbow watercolor painting. I had this idea for a rainbow floral heart and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but um, I'm really happy with it and I think you're really going to like it. So yeah, let's celebrate Pride Month. Let's celebrate this queer community and do a little painting. And don't bother with any negative comments because Chris will just be on that so fast. He will just delete them. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Okay, let's start today by having a quick chat about the supplies that I'm using. I have 140 pounds, so nice and thick, hot pressed watercolor paper. This is from Arches. Hot pressed is very smooth. If you prefer more texture, cold pressed is wonderful and would be great for this project as well. Uh, and then I have my Muno 48 pan watercolor set, but any paints will do. I have some paper towel for blotting, two glasses of clean water, and then I like using pointed round um, sable hair paint brushes. I've got these in a bunch of sizes. Today I'll be using a number four and a number two. They've got a nice big belly, but they come to a fine point, which is great for detail work. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is draw the heart and uh, for some reason I thought it would look good on an angle. If you need to, give yourself a line for the center of the heart, that just makes it easier to draw uh, symmetrically. And then you might have to erase a little if you draw like I do and you get all these messy pencil lines. <laughs> but anyways, you're drawing a heart, doesn't have to be on an angle. And then what we need to do before we begin to paint is mix up a bunch of color. So remember, when you're mixing, really scrub the pan of paint with your wet paintbrush and then bring the pigment over to the palette. That way you can mix up the colors that you like. You can mix in lots of water, which is necessary. Um, it just gives you lots of control. Now what I wanna do is mix up some red, orange, yellow, so all the warm colors that I'll use. I'm going for more pinks than reds. Maybe we'll call it a cool red. But you can see this is what my palette looks like before I even begin to paint. I have all my colors ready to use. Want to print my floral rainbow and celebrate pride? This is available for free for everyone. Head over to my Patreon after the video to get the downloadable file. So now I'll begin painting and that starts with just laying some water on the upper corner of the heart here. And then we're going to begin releasing pigment into that wet area. Now I'm putting a little bit of pink, a little bit of red. And then this technique that I'm going to use is what we're going to do for every color, for every flower. I'm going to paint flowers uh, using a wet on wet and a wet on dry technique in combination. So for each flower, you'll notice that for this one here, I'm starting on dry paper, so I have lots of control, but then I'm going to work my way over to this wet area. And of course, once the paint touches the wet area, it's going to bleed and blend. So, and you'll see what I mean as we move through the heart or move across the heart, but everything is a little bit messy. I want the edge of the heart to be, look very splashy. Oh, a good tip is to remember to erase your pencil line as you move around, because once you put watercolor over top of pencil, you won't be able to erase it. Now, if you are new to watercolors and you want more info on things like color mixing, supplies, and techniques like wet on dry and wet into wet, I do have an e-course and it is currently on sale through the end of June. In July, it goes back to regular price. Right now, you'll find it on my website, shadacampbell.com for the sale price of 49 USD. Uh, so now that I've done these very watery, messy hearts in the red, I'm beginning to move into orange. And I've just laid out a, like a very light orange paint. I'm still releasing some red into it because I want all the colors to flow and blend. It's supposed to look messy, like a big, just floral rainbow paintball hit this canvas. Um, and so you can even see me mixing a little yellow into that wet area. 
But then as I begin the flowers, I'm working partially on the dry paper, so I have control, and I'm letting the, some of the petals sit on the wet area so that they really blend and bleed and they look very loose. And sometimes I'm losing the detail altogether, like some of those orange flowers are just have gone back to being a puddle. But that's okay, we'll come back later once everything is dry and we'll add more detail. Now that I'm done the orange and the red, we're going to begin with the yellow. Uh, for the yellow, I'm doing kind of a, just a stippling to indicate a flower. Think of painting maybe like a goldenrod, a flower with a very small blossom, a flower that's a little more vertical. So we're kind of just hinting at flowers sometimes. The roses are these loose spirals, the orange flowers are just a few petals, and then the yellow is this stippling, and of course green is going to flow from the yellow here, so I'm actually able to add some green stems into our yellow area, and that um, helps it appear more floral as well. For the green section of the heart, I'm going to focus on leaves instead of flowers. And uh, really what I'm doing is using the very end of the brush, the very tip, to just lay down some little delicate stems. Then I pull that belly of the brush across the page and I get these tiny little leaf shapes. And then I'm also just releasing some paint to make that nice puddly edge for my heart. I don't want anything looking too stiff. I want everything to look watery and messy. And you might also notice that I'm sort of moving from a warm green at the bottom of the heart and I'm getting a little bit cooler as I work my way up. And of course you add yellow to warm your green and blue to cool it down. Um, and then I have put some more water here. These blue flowers, you get a real sense of how I'm working with wet into wet and wet on dry. These flowers at the top, the top petals are on dry paper so they're you know, they're very precise. Whereas these bottom flowers, they're just on a wet paper. So they're really bleeding and blending beautifully. And because these blue flowers are sitting right next to the green, I'm also going to put some little green stems and leaves. Uh, I kind of want all the colors to look like they're flowing from one to the next. So moving green through my blues and yellows will really help with that look. And we constantly need to be getting rid of our pencil outline, but you don't want to raise the whole thing at once or the heart might turn into a bit of a weird shape. And then you can see I just lay down a little bit of water with my brush and I start painting the flowers on that wet area so that they blend beautifully. Now you'll need to think about timing. Sometimes uh, if you put down water on the page, you can't paint on it right away because it will just be way too wet and you're gonna get this crazy burst of color. Um, and it, you're just gonna think, why do shaders look like that and mine doesn't? So sometimes you need to give it a minute, depending how much water you put on the paper. If you're only putting a little bit of water and it's um, already seeping in and drying quickly, well then you can start to paint on it immediately. So you might wanna do some practice with wet into wet if you're not familiar with it. If you are, I think um, this will come really easily. I also have a shade of short where I explain kind of what I mean by timing and how to consider your timing when painting with watercolors. So we'll link that in the video description as well. Now for the final flower, what I'm doing here is painting some lavender and you can see near the blue, I've done um, this very cool purple. And then as I move over towards the red, we're getting into a very warm purple. So I've mixed more red into the purple to warm it up um, and we kind of come full circle with our rainbow. And remember, you just want to keep mussing up that heart outline, make it messy, make it splashy, make it a bit, you know, wrong and wonky. It shouldn't look too perfect. Um, and then I kind of looked at mine and my heart wasn't as even as I thought it was going to be. So I needed to kind of bulk out the right hand side. It just looked a little thin and uneven. So if you're having trouble with balance, look at your heart in a mirror. Um, seeing it backwards can help you see where um, the lack of balance is. Okay, we are going to let that dry. I left mine for about 10 minutes, but you might not even have to leave it if you're going to start working back on the left hand side because what we are going to do now is start doing a little wet on dry. So we have dry paint and we just wanna add a little bit more detail 
to our flowers to really make them pop. And frankly, if yours looks like a big puddle, you can still paint flowers on top of the, um, you know, first layer, right? Like you can still get those details. You'll notice my orange flowers. It really just turned into a big orange blob and that's fine because now I can use a bit of a darker color and I can paint some flowers and I have the precision that I require because I am painting on dry paper or dry paint. I'm kind of blending everything together at this point, you know, making sure the purple flows into the blue and that the yellow flows into the green. And then I'm also just adding a few details where I need it. So if it's maybe just a hint of darker blue, a dark green line on some of the leaves, um, just those little details can really tie everything together and make your big rainbow blob look like it is actually flowers. Just a few final tips. Uh, if you need to turn your painting upside down to pull the brush towards you, you should do that. And I liked the leaves on the right hand side of the heart. So I ended up adding brown and burgundy leaves to the orange and red flowers. And that really brought everything together. And I just love the way this turned out. The final step is just to add a little bit more splashy paint, maybe just a couple dots here and there if you feel like yours could be a little messier, a little freer, and then just let it dry and that's it. Our rainbow pride month floral heart is all done and I'm so pleased with it. My friends, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Head over to Patreon to get your free printable. If you don't have to be a patron, it's available for everyone. And I will see you soon with a new tutorial.